you want stamina, you got to do it first. Mm -hmm. So the athletes that I, w I would train athletes, depending on what we were working on, and not a lot of my clients were athletes. Most of my clients were always, you know, average people. But when I had athletes that really wanted to improve stamina, then that's what we would do at the beginning of some of our workouts is I would do conditioning work or high intensity interval training. And then at the end, we would go to more traditional strength training. What you do at the beginning of the workout tends to get, that's not a huge difference, but it's a difference. And that's where you tend to get the most gains. When's the best time to do cardio? Well, here's the deal. If you want more stamina, do it at the beginning of your workout. If you want uh, more strength, lift weights first, then do cardio at the end. How about never stop? Never. never. Team stop no it. sweat. Stop it. <laughs> no sweat. No sweat. No, you know what's funny is that this is uh, it's got to be one of the most common questions, right? When do I do my cardio? Before or after weights? When no, that's good time? advice. That's yeah. good advice. It is. And if you want, I mean, the studies are pretty clear on this. If you want stamina, then you do it first. Whatever you want the most adaptation from whatever you want to prioritize there you is, go is where you want to place it in your workout absolutely and this is true for strength training too if you want your shoulders to respond more than your chest you can actually hit shoulders first i know that's like a big faux pas right always hit chest first but um <coughs> studies are pretty pretty good with this they show that what you do at the beginning of the workout tends to get that's not a huge difference but it's a difference and that's where you tend to get the most gains has there ever been a time in your life where either one of you did cardio before you lifted weights just curious. Uh, I did. Weights? Just curious. I did. You did? No. But out of necessity. When did, you, when did you want to be a cardio bunny and not, I didn't. not a weightlifter? Just the bunny. Mm. No, I, uh, because. Well, you bought those <laughs> leggings. You don't remember? <laughs> oh, that's right. Like really that's right. That's right. I had leggings? Yeah. No, I never had leggings, Justin. Uh, yeah. I, you know what it was? It was uh, because I didn't have. have pictures. Those, 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 I didn't have a driver's license. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I'm going to get you guys. <laughs> I, I have those. Uh, I have those <clears throat> tight, uh, like spandex, like workout. Remember when you used to make fun of me for wearing those? Yeah. And then yeah, you wore you, them, and then you, you yeah, because you wore them and you wore shorts afterward on top of it, so I could see that. Bro, it is way worse when guys wear no yes. shorts. No, 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 yeah, no. Dude. I'm not saying don't wear anything. I cover them with pants, so you even know I'm wearing. Oh, tight that's, ass, uh, okay. that's you know, overkill. Leggings. I thought you were literally just rocking the leggings. No, and doing your deadlifts. No, no, no. Was, I used I <laughs> that'd be terrible. Horrible visuals. I uh, I uh, used to do cardio first because I had to ride my bike to the gym. This is before I had my driver's license. Uh, so, is that really cardio, or is that yeah, like I guess so. riding your bike? That counts. Transportation. Yeah, is like well, I mean, I counted it <laughs> because my my parents' house was a. Uh, I was like three or four miles away from the gym, and I wanted to go to this gym so bad. So I'd ride my my bike all the way to the YMCA. So that's well, your only example. I that's take it. it back. I had two for group like workouts for football. Like we had to do morning conditioning at like. 6 a.m. Jazzercise. Then, jazzercise class. And <laughs> no, then we'd go from there to weightlifting in the middle of the day just because of how it was like organized. But yeah, I I never preferred it that way. That was always a struggle for me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you want stamina, you got to do it first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the athletes that I, w I would train athletes, depending on what we were working on, and not a lot of my clients were athletes. Most of my clients were always, you know, average people. But when I had athletes that really wanted to improve stamina, then that's what we would do at the beginning of some of our workouts is I would do conditioning work or high intensity interval training. And then at the end, we would go to more traditional strength training. How then, awkward was it for you training athletes? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like now that you couldn't program for them, I know you have the intelligence. Well, hell, that's a serious question. <laughs> that's a very serious question. A I feel like obviously you're smart enough Too to soft. program for them. <laughs> but I mean, that's only a small part of being uh, a good trainer. Yeah. you got to talk the rest of the time. So what's the conversation I know, look like? Ask me questions. How many about times? <laughs> how many times ball? did you show them how to throw a ball correctly? <laughs> Listen, yeah. I didn't do that. I kind just, of I'm just, I'm just yeah. picturing the conversation right now because when you have a client like that, if they're an athlete, they're yeah. obviously into watching sports. I, am, I understand movement. I know how all the traditional sports are played. I know what the rules yeah. are for the most part. Careful, you're stretching it now. Listen, no, <laughs> it was probably as awkward as me trying to tell somebody to present their physique on stage. No. <laughs> No, no, way less awkward than that. That's yeah, hella awkward. Yeah. I don't know. Dude. Dude, you <laughs> don't, don't get, you. Justin doesn't even get awkward. You get like annoyed right away. Like yeah. we can't even have a conversation yeah, here right. that could go that direction. You're just like, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like a, like a, well, pout, no, I don't, pouty I, little girl. No, I like, <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. No, no, I like bodybuilder stuff. I like, <laughs> oh, oh, I know. So bad. He gets all I don't mind, out. I don't mind talking I about uh, sports. It's when, it's I, when you guys get all in the weeds with the players and the percentages. And it's like, you guys are talking like trading basketball cards or baseball cards. I'm like, all right, come on guys. 
That's a nice, especially you. You get all into the I statistics mean, and uh, Steph Curry, thirty-seven percent increase in his rebounds. Stupid. And, and you notice, you know, like, oh, come on, dude. Nobody right. cares about that. Nobody got <laughs> traded to the whatever, and you know, and his dad did. I'm like, how do you know so much about these people? Just pay attention. It's man. the best. You know, that's what I think. Uh, you actually, I think it was you who pointed out when we were talking about like, you know, sports is the closest example that we have to like war on the day to day basis. I know. And I, football is probably one of the best, I would say, even though I'm a first a basketball fan and then probably a football fan. Uh, so football, just because there's so many players that you have to coordinate. Yeah, to, you know why I think two football mirrors war more than any other sport that people play? Because you try to kill each other on the Besi field. No, besides that, <laughs> when you have, like, you if are. you look at uh, conventional war, you have a Navy, an Air Force, you have your ground forces. Football, name a sport where uh, yeah. you have such different players. Like, yeah. look at a cornerback versus a, yeah, a no, linebacker versus a that's lineman. That's exactly my point, is that you have such a diverse group of yeah. people and so many of them that have so many different roles. And, I mean, God never thought of it that way. There's air assault. There's ground assault. There's mm -hmm. So you have all that going Yeah, on. dude. So, like you it's can't all have, game of inches, just like warfare. Like, whoever like gets the most ground is the one that's going to you know, eventually take the game or yeah. take the war. The, actually, the more, I feel like the more you understand about a single sport, the more interesting it becomes because that's the best part about getting into a sport is learning all the, the behind the scenes and the details and the backstories and what's really going on with the player. Like, the I, drama. You like the drama? No, no. Yes, I, it no, is. No, 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 yes, no, it no, is. No, 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 no. What do you no, mean? No. The backstories? No, 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 they actually they have a salary cap and they have a certain yeah. amount they can invest on players and so you know one of the things like the season's over for the Warriors right now the things that my buddies and I is a bunch of geeks that we are that we're like we're right. already like doing the math on like okay we're gonna be able to resign Clay we'll be able to do this then we're but we know someone's gonna pay so and so this much so we're gonna lose this person like so right. you get into like okay who's Send our draft pick away yeah like, who's you know. available for this and how can you piece together another person who can fit in the group like so it's crazy how much brain power goes into something like that. No, not because I think it's silly, but it just goes to show that when there's a market for something as big as there is for sports, no, you're, you know, it's, it's so much brain power goes into like, think about the, I had to let go, I had to let go of a lot of sports because of that. Actually, yeah. that exactly it was point. taking up too much. Space. No, yeah. that's the truth. That's the truth. There is, there came into both that and video games. I swear to God, that was a big, that was a big pivotal point in my life. There was a point in my life in my early twenties where I was following hockey, baseball, football, and basketball religiously, like all four of them. Okay. Like just the way I am about the Warriors. That's all I got now. That's okay. all I got for you is the Warriors now. Before I had everybody, I had all my teams like that, and I knew all the, the backstory. And then I was also playing video games. That was consuming so much of my life that I really believe that it had a lot. Uh, it, it stifled my growth. Mm. I wasn't spending it reading, that's for sure, or listening to audiobooks or listening to podcasts or researching anything in my in my on my craft. Like so, and I was working, making good money, but I was kind of hovering there. It was when I started to let go of a lot of that stuff. Is now, that is that something you like? What are the things that you've obsessed over the most <clears throat> in life for periods? Was it that? Would you say sports and video games? Really? Yeah, sports and video sports games. Sports and music for me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm still, I, it's a good music. I would be up there too. I was, I was pretty obsessive as a kid. I used to be someone who would buy the album and listen to everything, read every lyric. Yeah, you, like, remember when the CDs used to come? So yeah, for the yeah. kids that don't know, oh, CDs, yeah. a disc. Dude, <laughs> but I love the artwork. I yeah. love the lyrics. Like I wanted to know what like they put into it. You know, it wasn't just like the song itself mm -hmm. or like the catchiness of it or whatever. I'm like, what were they feeling in this? You know, I'm like, I always was trying to like get in the mind of the artist. That yeah. That's a, this is the hardest part about growing up, dude. About getting older. Yeah, yeah. You don't those, have time. You don't have time I love all those shit. things still. I love music like that still. I love sports like that still. I can still pick up the video game every now and then and, and get into it too. But you just yeah. you let go of a lot of that stuff in order to do other things that are more important. Mm -hmm. Obviously, spending time with my son and my wife. Or, or, or don't don't you wish he becomes obsessed with one of those things? Of course, <laughs> yeah. of course, bro. Why do you think I drag the fucking basketball hoop out every fucking day? Just you know, hope hope to God he comes over and wants to play puzzles. Yeah. That's what we're doing, dude. Puzzles. 
fuck? You, know? <laughs> you, you better know? get into puzzles. Yeah, so I guess so. You know, so uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's, I think every dad probably hopes that your your son or daughter falls in love with a passion yeah. that you had as a kid that I can reignite it, and then I have a good excuse to bury myself in it yeah. again, right? Because he's into it or whatever. They'll, so. You'll find something. I make like uh, my oldest son. <clears throat> he'll if we get into like I see him light up. So if we have friends over family. And we're all talking adults and, you know, he'll pipe in here and there. But then if it gets like philosophical, all of a sudden he's like a machine. He's going into like <laughs> existentialism and I, all these philosophical and like these deep conversations. <laughs> like we were talking about Mexican food. I don't know why you're going over here, but we, he goes into it and I can see that like, okay, this is like, this is fun. You know, I, think I have, it- that's, that's, that's how I was too. Oh boy, 72 hours left for the MAPS Cardio launch, which is why I'm going to give one of you free access to MAPS Cardio. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. You'll get free access to MAPS Cardio. Okay, so 72 hours, the launch is over. So within this launch period, here's what you get, right? It's going to retail. MAPS Cardio is going to retail for 117 but right now you can get it for 77 So there's savings there. Plus... You're going to get two ebooks for free. The first one is VO2 Max Boost How to Make Your VO2 Max Increase and Improve. The second ebook that we're going to give you for free is Eat for Performance How to Modify Your Nutrition to Maximize Your Stamina and Endurance. So if you sign up in the next 72 hours, you get MAPS Cardio for 77 bucks instead of 117, plus two free ebooks, which will both be sold separately for money, not free, later on. Here's how you can sign up. Go to mapscardio.com and use the code cardio special for the giveaways and the discount. All right, here comes the show. Yeah, well, those those things have carryover into being successful, though. I feel like that's like, unfortunately, unless I found, obviously, if I found something in sports broadcasting or mm-hmm. got lucky that way, or I got something into music, got lucky that way those things would really benefit me or video gaming. There's obviously careers in those things, but if you're not going to pursue a career in one of those avenues, they really do end up taking up a lot of space that is going to help you potentially grow. And I mean, I, I, I mentor my cousin who's, he's still like a hardcore gamer. And this is like, and I remember having my buddy who was older than me, who would give me a tease me about playing video games still when I was like 30 right? or late twenties, I was like 28 and I'm still playing video games. And he was like, Bro, when are you going to give that shit up? When are you going to stop playing that? Oh, I'm going to do it forever. You know, that type of deal. (laughs) I totally believe that. And, you know, his argument to me was just like, okay, dude, whatever. If I'm spending an hour a night or two hours some nights playing things like that, like that, I could be knocking books out like crazy that will in turn help me in whatever thing I'm pursuing in life, right? And so... That was a, that was a hurdle I had to get over, like as far as letting that stuff go, and then started carving out more time on things that were going to be. If you guys saw the stuff that I obsessed over as a kid, you guys have been like, "What <laughs> the hell is wrong with like sharks?" Or uh, I, I read books. Well, you on, were like a certified true nerd. Yeah, like, I, I mean, th- those if are, I thought I would think of something, and I'd be like, "I want to know everything about that thing," and I'd just read about it. Or yeah. then I got into fitness, and I'd literally go to the library. And read the most obscure books on fitness and muscle fibers and chemistry and supplements and just go just nuts with it. I used to love doing that. And I, I, mean, used, to, I used to read – there was this one book I used to like to read. There was this – I had to find it. It's really cool. This artist created fictional aliens that would live on every planet in the solar <laughs> system. So what they would have to look like, mm-hmm. how they would have to evolve for the atmosphere. So, like, it was such a fascinating – I, I, I got to find that So book. what do you think – okay, because – Katrina would make the argument that we're all very much so the same in this aspect. We just have different things that we're nerds about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She would call me a nerd too, even though I wouldn't call myself a nerd. She'd go, oh, you're totally a nerd on your, the things that you're yeah. into. Right. So what do you think it is? Because it, the way you obsessed with that, I was probably obsessing over athletes or songs sure. or things like that. W- was it somebody in your family or were you just naturally drawn to that? Like, do you no, remember? I mean, or, was it, or did you have a group of friends that you guys all played like magic cards and stuff like that? And talked about those? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't play Dungeons and Dragons and Magic. Bro, I played a little Dungeons Don't lie, dude. Don't lie. You did too. I did. Yeah. I, I Listen, like I was very diverse, you know? Like I, I was like athlete, but also was like undercover nerd, like total undercover nerd, especially with like science fiction and futuristic tech. Like I was always on the up and up with like what, like 
scientists or whoever was working on like you, the popular science. I was like super. Do you like, remember that show Beyond Two Thousand? Uh, remind me. Okay. By the way, this is so funny. Back back when we were kids in the late eighties, uh, which we were young, so I was like, you know, like eight, it was like a nine, futuristic 10, show or something, or you know, <laughs> in, in my teens in the nineties. 2000 was the future. Mm -hmm. Like anything 2000 was like yeah. 2000. There was a show called Beyond 2000. Do you remember, Doug, that show? You don't remember? I don't. No, so I the don't. show was all about like the newest cutting edge science. I want to see, I wonder if they predicted anything right. Anyway, it's a freaking obsess over the show. Oh, yeah. Because it would show like- I wonder because they, they, there was one, uh, I don't know if it was, it was a TV show that it showed this guy that would always just obsess over the future. And he was like- talking about communities where they had these like hexagonal pods and everything. And they were trying to make it all environmental friendly and all this way back in the day. And he speculated that we would be communicating instead of with like letters and words and all that with these like characters. holographic characters. Oh, yeah. And like, we would, we would just know like just by a symbol, mm. uh, what it meant. So that was supposed to, okay. That was supposed to be happening right now. And we've kind of, I felt like we've kind of stalled on that. Like the whole introduction of like emojis and stuff. Oh, I there see was a lot saying. of people when that first came on that, uh, that agreed that we were going to move away from like the traditional English language and move to if, more characters. If you look at historically, because you could, you could put more together. It will. Way. It'll happen. It's a matter of time. If you, it maybe not, information, maybe if not, it's the right information though. Yeah. Maybe not that, but it, there will be a universal language at some point. If you look at, um, languages historically, the more, the easier it is to, to travel and the, the more communication we have with far distances, the more language starts to become homogenized. So like, mm. for example, where, where my family's from in Italy and Sicily, right? Old countries, been around for thousands, you know, obviously law, really, really old. There are dialects in different regions and there are ways of pronouncing certain, like there's Sicilian, but then there's like, like Palermo Sicilian, there's Catania type Sicilian. Um, and that's because back in those days when those languages were used, like people didn't go very far. You had a donkey, like you didn't, you're not going to go very far, right? And then, of course, Italian became the official language of Italy and so on. So as we go further and further and as people communicate easier and easier, at some point, there's going to be a universal language. That's going to be, that's going to be a huge boom to, to progress and uh, economics. That's a big barrier, his language. Well, I, yeah, because even what – I forget his name, Micho – Michio uh, Kaku. Yeah, he was yeah. on Joe Rogan talking – because they were speculating because with Neuralink and oh, Elon yeah. – Musk's like trying to map, um, you know, the brain and like how all these electrical impulses kind of organize together to create language like that we would end up almost telepathically like communicating <laughs> at some point. But the there's still that, that the barriers language barrier because I would be doing all that in English, whereas somebody who just knows Japanese like that we would have different associations and different uh, sure. deliveries. Not just that, you know, that language affects how you think. So people who speak different languages will think slightly differently because of the way that the languages present certain phrases, whereas... Sure, that explains why some people get insulted by certain comments versus other, other, other countries don't think... Well, I mean, just, even as simple as like, we write our date, month, day, year. Most countries are the, the, do, I think, what do they do? They do uh, uh, day, month, year, and then year. Month, like stuff like that. Like we may put a particular type of word at the end of a sentence, whereas other countries might put it in the front. That mm -hmm. actually can change the way that you think. I yeah, watched this whole reading left to right versus like, yeah. yeah, from the bottom up or, you know, there's different ways that people approach really it. Really weird. Speaking of like, you know, like future stuff or whatever, I just read that scientists in Japan, I swear to God, scientists don't watch scary sci-fi movies sometimes. They just, <laughs> know. they, they made, or that's what gives them the ideas. Maybe <laughs> they made human skin. So they grew cells in the lab and made skin. Oh and through using a certain type of new technology scaffolding, we're able to make the skin grow and wrap around a robot hand and finger. So it's human skin on a robot. And it had a fingerprint. They've been watching a lot it, of Westworld. Bro, that's straight up Terminator. Remember yeah. Terminator? Yeah. When, when he's like got machine underneath, but he's got the, you know, he, remember he cuts his arm open. It's all yeah. right, whatever. Dude, this can be weird. So they can actually graft skin to metal? Like they they did it on, I think it was a finger or a hand and they touched it and everything and said, oh, it felt like a like human skin. Oh, <laughs> that's going to be weird. Well, you dude. know, that's going to happen. Yeah. It's, if they can do just that little bit, like then oh, now sure. it's like, this is going to be a whole scientific effort. In I, I, I wonder if, obviously we're going to be alive to see like some of this transpire, but are we going to be like the clunky era? 
when they're like they're super yeah. <laughs> they're all clunky and like don't Ugly, look real weird yeah like, patchy it, the actors were gone before they're like my cynic the cynical part of me is like because on the one hand it's like oh my god we could we could create limbs for people who miss limbs. We could yeah. do all kinds of cool stuff. And then the other side of me is like, they're going to make sex robots. That's what they're going to do. Yeah. They're going to put skin on a robot and then you're going to people. Well, that's how they'll pitch like the advancements of all that is like, of oh, course, look what it does for burn victims. And look what, it, meanwhile, they're like outfitting some like psychopath, like robot. That, that's my prediction on how they're going to push the metaverse on so many people. Is I just think that it's going to, it's going to help a lot of people that are like completely plagued by, being out in society and have all these disabilities and like it's going to be a good thing for a lot of people and because there's a lot of people that it's going to be good for it's going to be pushed as like this awesome thing and then everybody's well, going to get name, sucked in name, well, not everybody a lot of people will name one revolutionary breakthrough <clears throat> that didn't have uh, a dark side yeah there's nothing like serious anything that has that much power to revolutionize humanity also has a potential negative Anything. Yeah, yeah it's true. Name it. So like fire. Oh, yeah. Fire really helped us. But you also they use it in war and they could burn people. Nuclear power. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you could go down a list of all kinds of, you know, technological advancements. Like the advancements they can make with- Apple pie. There's not anything wrong with apple pie, though. Mm, make mm. you fat. That's true. I don't know if that's a- Was that a breakthrough, though? Yeah. Oh, it was a breakthrough. Yeah. I had a good apple pie this week. You dropped, it was the, that's a really good apple pie. You dropped your apples in my pie. Oh, my God. What did you just invent? <laughs> Uh, Serious hey, breakthrough. That's the for me. That's the best, right? A real, a good apple pie. I had an amazing the, apple for pie. For me, it's my number did. one dessert. It's with better some, than even cannoli. With, Sorry, no, it no. needs vanilla ice cream though on top of it. Oh, I can't do ice cream. Oh, you guys know that. Oh, that's like a waste of an apple pie. I now, do like. you like the apple pie with the sugar crystals on it? Like or, crumble. Yeah. Like I like the crumble. Oh yeah, you're oh. good. You like more sugar, the better. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna wash it down with some ice cream. It's my good. Mo my mom makes a um, apple crisp. You know what apple crisp is? Uh-uh. So it's like it's like oatmeal. She uses oatmeal, but it's like crispy and it's on, but it's like gluten free. So Justin would like it. Oh, okay. And it's amazing. You know what? I'll bring you guys some. I have yeah, some yeah, right now at the house, up, dude. and I've been watching, looking at it in the fridge, and just having a conversation with myself, like, nah, I'm not gonna do no, it. But I'll bring it here. Satan. How's uh, how's your week being empty home, dude? That's not like you to have an empty home. Bro, I watched like? TV all day yesterday. All day. All day. <laughs> <laughs> well, like all day. Like yeah, all day. Leave. Yeah. All day. <laughs> I ate breakfast. Wow. I sat down, like, you know, I put my legs up, you know, on the chair or whatever. And I was like, I could just watch TV right now. And that's just what I did. Seinfeld. Oh, oh yeah. Whatever, whatever yeah. I want. Took a nap, you know, halfway through, <clears throat> fall asleep, turn, oh, wake up, <laughs> oh, watch something else. All day. <laughs> Went outside in the backyard for a little bit. I better get some sun. <laughs> oh, my God. Back inside, you know, it was, it was pretty wild. I haven't done that in so long. Katrina and I had, uh, Katrina and I had her brother. Her brother took Max overnight. And, you know, so he, he picked him up in the, early the day before and had him all the way till the next day. So we had him like a full 24 plus hours and so wild to, uh, <laughs> to just not have a kid. You know, you, you get so trained with having a kid 24 seven that everything in your life modifies. We had this moment. It was hilarious. We're, uh, we're pulling up to the grocery store and Katrina goes, okay, I'll go run in this. I'll go run and get this, this and that. I said, like, I, I looked at her, I go, I can't come in with you. And she looked at me and she goes, oh, oh, that's right. I guess you could come in with me. Because every time we go to the grocery store, a lot of times we're just getting small things. Like yeah. one of us waits out with Max or Max is asleep in the car. So it's always like one person goes in. And before we had a kid, <laughs> yeah. if we go grocery shopping, Dude, we both walk in the grocery store. And how, we go grocery shopping. how fun is grocery shopping with your girl when you don't have to go <laughs> anywhere? Kids, right? like trying yeah. to pull yeah. every which way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And she started laughing. Totally She's experience. like, oh my God. She goes, that's so true. She's like, we haven't done that. We haven't gone in a grocery store together in probably like three years. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like somebody's out. <laughs> Little things. The, yeah, like a little thing like that, or you know, sitting around watching. Like, you want to run? You want to run this back and watch two episodes? You want to go back to back right now? It's what? like, oh my god, yeah. dude! Yeah, I love that. I love going. Up. I love going grocery shopping. If it was just Jessica and I, we just walk through and say, hey, we should get this. You want to try this cheese? Let's get this chocolate. Okay, what do you want to make tonight? That might take a while. That'll be fun. Yeah, you know what I mean. When you have kids, you're like go go go. <laughs> we ain't got time. <laughs> oh my god, it's being cheese. Like Adam finally took me to this place in Carmel that's like the cheese shop, I guess. And it was like, so- When we, you walked in, were they all like so excited to see you? <laughs> Nobody knew who I was. I was like, come on, guys. Mr. Andrews. He's here. <laughs> Everybody get ready. The king He's has arrived. The cheese king uh, the is cheese. here. <laughs> cheese Meister. You uh, imagine? Uh, yeah. They push a button. I was like, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was, it was overwhelming for me. 
I, uh, I had to step out. I <laughs> but like, no, you did Yeah, I was like, Courtney, you got to pick a few. You know what I like? Like, I like more of the uh, uh, sort of hard cheese, like more more like sharp and cheddar kind of direction to that. Mm-hmm. And so she picked quite a few out. But like this guy that was there, I guess, helping her out, he, she asked him, like, well, what's your favorite cheese? And this guy was raving about this one specific cheese. I don't remember the name. It was real fancy. But it was like orange. I'm so glad you don't remember the name. This is a terrible story. Dude. I wish I knew what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited could, to hear about literally, it. Literally, <laughs> I could, like, tell you, because I posted it in my story, and it's in the, um, it, it's on the label of it. Is it, it like, French or, or yeah, it's Italian? Like, okay. Yeah, it's French. Do you remember what region it was? Okay, so you. Yeah, yeah, it's French, but it was, like. Um, <clears throat> was it soft or hard? It had, it was hard. It had. These little pockets of salt in it. Oh. So you didn't realize it till you start eating it and then they would just like enhance the flavor. Oh. Uh and it was I love it was salty so cheese. fucking good, dude. I, I was like, I gotta get a whole wheel of this thing. You know, so we're like researching it. And I guess besides getting like on the monthly cheese subscription, which I didn't know was an option either. <laughs> Um, you can you can order pre-pay? online and like get get it <laughs> get shipped a two to your year? house. I'm oh, like, oh, yeah. this is beautiful. I'm totally doing this. Oh, dude. But we didn't even eat dinner. Like I made the whole night. We were just like we had this like plethora of like I don't know six or so different cheeses, and we we're just sitting there trying them and drinking wine. That's awesome. that's Katrina and I's. Our awesome. favorite thing to do is go down to Carmel. You go to that place. What's cool about it is like. I mean, it's cheese from all over the world. Yeah. So if there, if there is a cheese that is famous somewhere in the world, it's at this place. They have it from everywhere. And the guy who's behind the counter, or the people that work behind the counter, like they know their shit. And they're, oh, they're, yeah. they'll give you a cheese, and then they'll actually pair the wine that goes best oh, with that's that cheese. Oh, so fun. And it's got, yeah. they have all every wine you could think of, all the cheese. Like it's a, it's See, a really cool I can't cool do, shop. obviously can't do dairy, but I'll do a little bit of cheese here and there. But <clears throat> back in the day when I could have dairy, um, I went on vacation to, uh, we we're in Paris. And we went to this nice restaurant and they brought out a cheese cart. So they oh, wheeled yeah. out a cart and they had like levels in the cart and there were different countries and different types of cheeses. Uh, it was such a great experience. I found it. What it's is it? Mimolette. So M-I-M-E-L-E-T-T-E. Ooh, well, you know about that, Doug? That. You know anything Mimolette. about that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't. Wow. I've been to the shop though. Oh, you've been That's there? It's a great shop, yeah. Oh. Look up the picture. Hands down, of best cheese ever. I like changed my answer now. Everybody asks me on my stories all the time, and I'm always like, you know, you got, trying to give some. Do you like you got a fancy answer recommendation? Now. I'm like, I'm <laughs> Yeah. Do you like um uh like really really strong like blue cheeses? Yeah, and, uh, okay, I like it. You know cheese. what I don't like? Yeah, I don't like the stinky, real stinky stuff or the too soft. Like, there's only a few soft cheeses I really like. That's kind of like not my. Do thing. you know that there's a cheese in Sardinia? I think. So Sardinia is an island off the coast of Italy, right? Thanks. Yeah. That you're welcome. Geography lesson. <laughs> it's in the Mediterranean. <laughs> Help me. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, south of Italy to the left. It's uh, it's got maggots in it. Oh, that's mm. not good Here for the go. story. No, 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 no. Maybe Doug can look this up. It's a it's a <clears throat> it's a, a specialty. So you know cheeses, oh. they, they let them mold. Don't they like always blue just say that about anything nasty? You know, know. This is a delicacy. That's yeah. how they close. Now it. I, <laughs> I'm looking up Mimolette cheese. Okay, and it says if. In case you're unaware, the FDA has cut off supplies of Mimolette, a beloved French hard-aged cheese, as it feels that the microscopic mites on the rind, oh. essential for creating the cheese you need flavor, oh, no. might cause a, an allergic a, a reaction. That's, what uh, that's for all the pussies. Um, <laughs> it was amazing. Justin's like, I thought it was crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, so a lot of cheeses are weird like that. Doug, maybe you can look up- It the- has mites? Wait, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm my dog has mites right, right now. now. Yeah, my it. dog's got like, mites right now. Oh, yeah, this cheese is wait, good. Mm-hmm. It tastes skinnies. good. No, look up the sar- Sardinian cheese with it's got maggots in it, and maybe pull up a picture. It's a real mm. thing, and you you take the maggots out. Okay, so you don't oh, it's like so the worm and the tequila. Not, no, it's a lot. I mean, there's some protein there. Man, I don't right? know, if Doug. You can switch the screen because I want. So okay, yeah, so it's kasu martsu. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's it. And there's uh, and there's maggots in it, but you take the maggots out and then you eat the cheese. I, apparently, I don't know. Maybe uh, Doug can yeah, pull up a picture. Yeah, it's a traditional Sardinian sheep milk cheese that contains live insect larvae. Okay. Maggots. Uh, mm. I'll find a picture here for you. It just gives you definitely more, an acquired taste. It's more protein. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but you you pull the maggots out. <laughs> so what's the point of like allowing them to live? Because in- they what they do uh, is part of what they do is what gives the cheese its flavor. Mm. The way it molds, the way they eat it, and probably create some waste. They product. secrete like, poop their on it. juices. Maybe, in there. dude. You yeah. like honey, right? You know what honey is? It's yeah. bee puke. 
Yeah. Yeah. Bee, bees are different, though. No. <laughs> well, they're different insects. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah. A lot of those things, like, uh, what was the other one I just learned? It was about, like, lipstick. I believe there's. A lot. <laughs> Remember that's what I the lipstick I said yeah, was the beaver, whale, beaver no, I used to Yeah, but, but besides penis. that, like the shimmery lipstick or whatever is really just like fish scales. Wow. Yeah. So wow. Just, you might as well just like rub a fish on your face. Oh my god, that's disgusting. Speaking yeah. of insects, did you guys know that cockroaches are slowly becoming invincible to pesticides? Oh, what? Great. This, this is a big. This is a big. They deal. really are going to live oh, yeah, past look, nuclear. Look war. at that. That's the cheese. Look, see, it's full of. Uh, of maggots this, in there. Dude, how is that appetizing? I, I would eat it. You just got to get the maggots off of it, dude. He's like, hmm, yeah. Hmm. Oh, wash it down. Yeah, wash it. Like, Looks really good. Yeah. No, Need so- more wine. So in the industry, in the pest control industry or whatever, they're they're obviously, you have to be, you have to know what's going to work on, in, on insects right, right. and pests. They've become so resilient. Cockroaches apparently, so you know the whole joke, like the last thing that'll be left on earth when the nuclear war, right. you know, yeah, whatever. It's, yeah, because they don't, they don't die with radiation. Yeah. And the pesticides, they stop- they're stomp- you got to stomp them a few times too. They're literally they're, starting they're, to get to the tough. point where they're going to become immune to pesticides. So we're going you know, to get to the point where we have to wow. get like, yeah. Great. Speaking of evolving, there was a man, I don't remember what country he was in, but I know he went and had, he had sex with a sex worker, I think in Malaysia, came down with gonorrhea and it wouldn't go away. They've identified super gonorrhea. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's it's antibiotic resistant, what? and they had to throw this like cocktail of drugs at it. Yeah. <clears throat> but they're like, we're gonna at some point. So he has all these gonorrhea powers, just right <laughs> in, ready at his whim. Yeah, Where does it come out? <laughs> Throws the tips for it. Yeah. <laughs> got it. good news and bad news. <laughs> <laughs> bad news is you, you can fight you crime got with bad your gonorrhea. Yeah, good news is you're a superhero. It's now. Super, yeah. it's Man. super. Like, gonorrhea. I didn't want all these powers. Yeah. <laughs> no. With great power comes great yeah. responsibility. That sucks. Is uh, he the only case? Yeah, great. No, so are we going to worry about this spreading now? Like, uh, Well, you have to have sex for it. Well, so you're not going to counsel. Justin's not having any sex. Is that what you're, <laughs> no, what I mean, you're no, implying? No, unless your spouse gets it from somewhere. Uh, I mean, okay. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. It's one of, those things. <laughs> one of those things. You know what they're investigating, though, for it's for antibiotic properties because there's anti- antibiotic resistant bacteria. If, this is a, that's a big deal, by the way. Yeah. Like scientists are really scrambling because at some point we're screwed. Antibiotics aren't going to work anymore. They've been looking to plants and how plants naturally have antibiotic properties. And for some reason, the, the bacteria don't adapt to plants' defense systems. So, yeah. for example, cannabinoids. You know that you find in cannabis and hemp can kill certain antibi- uh, certain bacteria, um, and there's other oils and extracts from plants that have these particular properties. And is that attributed to like their like mutations and like yeah. their natural selection yep. within? Okay, over so the plants years. that have some of these oils on them and some of these you know compounds. I mean, they obviously evolved for who knows how many hundreds of thousands or millions of years to ward off certain fungus, certain bacteria, mm-hmm. and they, because evolution takes so long, it's like superior to antibiotics in terms of- I know, feel like you're works. setting the table for Organifi protein powder commercial. No, no, it's for Caldera, actually. Because <laughs> Caldera has natural plant extracts for you. That was a terrible- Damn it. Oh, <laughs> you dude. missed the mark, yeah. Adam. I set you up. And uh. <laughs> Caldera's got plant extracts. Uh. Yeah, but you know, your skin. Cons- oh, because you rub it on your skin. You rub it on uh, your skin. I think it consume. I think it and, consume. And the you studies sold, you sold them the jumpstart package instead of you know <laughs> yeah. the, the full. And, and the I, studies wait. show it helps with wrinkles, blemishes, and uh, probably it has some good bacterial balancing effects. Now I would think. Ah. Uh, okay, so that's okay. You're thinking from skin. I was thinking from like inside of you. So I'm thinking what you got to take in. No, yeah. no, Organifi doesn't have any antibiotics. <laughs> <laughs> they just have really good protein. They have powder. a lot of plants, though. You know who's you know who's been using their protein powder like crazy? My mother-in-law, like crazy. So she's changed her diet, and I'm I'm having her increase her protein intake. She can't do dairy, and she's you know. Okay, is most of your family like that, or is it just a couple of you? No, that's Jessica. It's Jessica's mom, so it's not related. Oh, got yeah. it. Um, but, uh, she can't do dairy. So we're doing Organifi protein. And so she's a, she's not a fitness consumer. So like, if you give me a protein powder, if I think it's good quality, I don't really care how it tastes. The average consumer, I know this when I share a protein powder with somebody, I'm like, okay, I hope they like the taste. Otherwise they won't drink it. She loves it. She likes the vanilla. So yeah. she's been, she's been crushing it twice a day. 
and it's working well for her. I've never been into the chocolate. I've, vanilla has always been my flavor because mm-hmm. you can mix it with other stuff. Mm. And I think that Organifi it good on nachos. It does. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Ugh. No, it does the best because I, any plant protein powder is, but and and Organifi is right. Yeah. So does best I think with uh, tarty flavors. So blueberries, strawberries. Oh, tart. Ras- yeah, tarty. I understand you for a second. It, it, tarty, tarty flavors. <laughs> is that a word? Can I say tarty? Tarty. I guess you can. Is tarty a word, tart- Doug? Or is it just yeah? Tart- maybe it's tart flavors. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, tarty is like tarty. late. That's, that's tarty. tarty. That's D. Yeah. That's what I thought you said. Tarty. <laughs> yeah. tarty. Tarty. Maybe. Look it up, Andrew. Tell me if it's a it's word. It's a new word. If not, uh, add, it, add it to the library. Yeah. Put it in the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you guys want to hear a, a couple communist jokes that I heard over the weekend? <laughs> do <laughs> I? <laughs> you want to hear uh, do these, I? What did, <laughs> what did the communists use before candles for light? <laughs> Electricity. <laughs> That's messed up. All right, one more. I have one a friend. more. I, I asked my friend, zingers. my friend who lives in North Korea. I said, "Hey, what's it like living there?" He says, "I can't complain." <laughs> <laughs> I can't complain. I mean, literally. Yeah. Sorry. I read and by the, the way, tardy uh, is a proper word. Yes. Booyah! Damn. Tarty. You're Dropping good. knowledge on you. You're good, today. dude. Jeez. You're good. Hey, you never use that as an adjective. So. Justin, you want to yeah. hear something crazy? Uh huh. So I've been reading about the Bermuda Triangle, and uh, do you know what the Bermuda Triangle is? It's an area where uh, unexplained stuff happens when people, it's a part where people go, ships disappear, planes, compasses go off. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, Yeah, it's like- good job. You've been hanging out with this long enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know what they did? So they did the math, and the percentage of ships and planes that go missing in the Bermuda Triangle is no greater- than anywhere else where there's an equal amount of traffic. Yeah, I heard it's, been so it's just a numbers thing. It because there's so much traffic that flies between there that that's what happens. Okay, because here's heard what I think. So many I think wild they're hiding things about it. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're full of shit. No, but isn't there a patch in the Atlantic Ocean, like down close to there, where uh, it gets a lot of like this really weird still. Like, there's no wind. Oh, the doldrums. Doldrums, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and so it's like that contrast, like, creates a really weird sort of a, a weather system around it. Mm, yeah, so I think doldrums resp- refers to anywhere where that would happen. But it happens a lot within that there's particular region. There's areas where there's no wind? Well, I mean, so this was a big deal back before we had, like, steam engines and powered boats where yeah. you, so you just wind. get caught in that and you don't move at all. Yeah, you get caught in the ocean and it's dead still. And you're basically like, we got to wait it out. Because there's nothing we can do. We're just going to sit here. Yeah. There's no current. There's no nothing happening. But yeah, I think there's a place <clears throat> near the Bermuda Triangle that uh, that does that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's some wild theories. Like obviously, even but even the, the doldrums. Alien people, the doldrums. Is that a spot or is yeah, that just it's an actual to- location, a little north of the equator? God damn. Justin, I just, I just, yeah. We Justin just, and I are fired. You remember the name, no. though. That's, <laughs> you know what it is. important. Is uh, Justin and Good I we're only remember low. random things. Yes, you guys do. <laughs> Worthless, <laughs> random shit. Worthless podcast stuff. That's true. It's so That's relevant true. now, you That's guys. True. We like, have nothing to talk about listen, for 45 minutes every yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> the world is so <laughs> weird now. Yeah. It's like we're, we've just been trying to figure this out, like put all these pieces together like a jigsaw puzzle, you know, like yeah. where, where does this all end up? Like, where are we going? Okay. Uh, I, I did want to ask you guys this cause I thought about this earlier. Speaking of random, did you guys have a favorite snack or treat as a kid that is embarrassing to admit right now? Like, like if you were to say, Oh yeah, I like this. And we looked at it like, what is that? That's so I used to eat those. Mm. Um, you remember those little mini breadsticks and you dip into cheese? The handy snacks, I think they're called. Oh, remember handy snacks? Yeah, I think they're called handy snacks. <laughs> Take a look. Yeah, there. it was it was a little plastic tray. Oh uh, yeah, and there was the fake cheese. Yeah, I'm surprised this guy was in it, and he needs to get the little yeah. like, bread stick things. Yeah, no, like, and, and, still and, no, there was a red <laughs> stick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, and you spread it on and the you, cracker, and you, and you make like a little cheese cracker. Well, I yes. told you guys about my easy cheese like phase, the like, cheese whiz. Yeah, where you just. <laughs> Like sh- out of a can, like on everything. Was it called yeah, a yeah. handy snack? No, no. Yeah, that's it. Look at. I don't think it was called handy snack. <laughs> Where'd you get that's that? A, yeah, it says handy snacks, isn't it? Yeah, it's handy snacks. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, I was wow, right. That I was is, right. That's, that's borderline. You know I what probably I, had the generic brand. You know of what course. I used to love? Yeah. I just saw these the other day at the grocery store, and I brought back all these <laughs> memories. Uh, Mother circus cookies. Oh, oh, I yeah, love those. those. Gross. Do you know what those are? Oh, the pink and white ones. Yeah, dude, with the sprinkles on them. Yeah. What a what a diabetes. Just those nightmare. Those were good. I like oh those. That, that reminds me of like the Little Debbie's. I used to have the um, oatmeal cream cookie. Mm. You remember those? I do. Dude. I do. Little Debbie's was fire. Okay. It was like, 
It was, yeah, it was cheap. It was always like twenty five cents or Dude, like, those are so like the pie, remember the pies you could get for twenty five cents or just okay. I was just gonna it's say gross. If you worked in construction or yeah. you worked for people, because yeah. I obviously my dad was in construction, so I would go with him for work. And yeah. every guy that was their dessert after lunch yeah, it was you, a home run pie. Yes, home run pie. That's uh, what it was. It's home run yeah, pie. You get them at seven eleven. You get them for a quarter. Twenty five cents. Yeah, yeah. Which today and it only cost fifteen. And it was a lot. <laughs> that was like the like for like sugar most dessert you get for twenty five. That's exactly what it was. Thank you. And it, remember on the it's package, like all shortening and just like sugar. Uh, were you, package, a, big, were you say, a big home run pie guy? Doug? I was not. No. What, what did you do for snacks? Yeah. Doug, or, when what, Doug was a kid, it only cost two shekels for one of those pies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would I would eat uh, some Hostess products here and there, but not. We didn't really have them around the house. You weren't mm. a big Twinkie guy? No, I was no. not. Don't mm. tell me you're you know raisins. What? One of the things I ate when <laughs> I was... Raisins? <laughs> no, he looks like I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. It's a box of raisins. I, I hated raisins Max when I was a kid. Raisins, dude. Because my brother-in-law raisins. gave me a box of raisins once, and I was in a dark place, and I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was eating them. <laughs> Wait a minute. Please and, uh, continue. Please like like start that story. Yeah, please yeah, continue. I was, I was, it was a real dark place. It wasn't pitch black, but I was just eating them mindlessly, and then I got to the bottom of my box of raisins, and there was like maggots at the bottom. Oh, oh. Wait, so, so I've been on. eating. Hold them. On. You're oh, talking about worst. literally a dark place. Like the room was dark. The room was not a dark place. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I got like, depressed. I was, <laughs> I was depressed eating my raisins. Not in a dark place. And <laughs> no, from that really point forward, I could not eat raisins. Of course, I I figured I ate a few of those. When I was a kid, <sighs> if you gave someone a raisin cookie. And didn't tell them you would you, they'd get in a fight with. They you. would be yeah, upset because yeah. it looks like a chocolate chip cookie. You would all, they, you, you would, that would be get your ass kicked uh, in junior high. Uh, or high and you and cannot high trade people. raisins. Like I was always trying to. I'm like, <laughs> mom, stop giving me these things. Like, <laughs> I can never upgrade. You know, I'm like, give me a fruit roll up, mom. <laughs> I want something good. If raisins, I just throw them against the wall. If you empty the box out and blow through the box, it whistles. Yeah. Whistle. You can whistle out of it. Wow, yeah. you guys did the same thing, yeah, yeah, and with a blade of grass, yeah. dude. You do that, or you take your thumbs, hairs. and you make and you make music like, like Zamfir. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew doesn't know who Zamfir it's, is. <laughs> Zamfir, there were late night commercials on TV, and Zamfir played a flute like like Pan, the Pan <laughs> flute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've, we've lost all of our audience that was born in the nineties or soon. Yeah, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Watch on the YouTube channel; he'll put it up for you. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, so basically, Memory if you want lane. more stamina, do cardio first. <laughs> in a roundabout way. There you go. Hey, you got to check out this company called Olipop. So they make delicious drinks flavored like strawberry vanilla, orange squeeze, cherry vanilla, classic grape, vintage cola. Here's the best part. The cans are 35 calories. That's it. No artificial sweeteners. Check this out. You're looking at uh, a proprietary blend of botanicals, plant fibers, prebiotics. This is a gut healthy soda with only 35 calories. This company's exploding. It's a healthy drink that tastes like the sodas you had when you were a kid. I'm not making this up. You got to try them out. So head over to drinkolipop.com. That's drinkolipop.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump and get 20% off plus free shipping on your entire order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Alex SN Medic. Does it matter where I get my protein as long as I get enough per day? Uh, well, it depends on what you mean by enough. If your protein intake is on the high end, okay, let's say you're eating like 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight or one gram of protein per pound of body weight. It doesn't matter. Uh, studies will show that <coughs> plant protein, animal protein, dairy protein, if your protein intake is high enough, you're going to get high enough amounts of amino acids because that's what makes up protein and it's not going to really make a difference. Muscle growth and recovery and everything's pretty damn similar. Now when your protein intake is lower than that, which I'm going to be quite honest, most people watching this don't eat that much protein. They think they eat a lot of protein, but they don't if you actually do the math. They, then it does matter. If your protein intake is less than, let's say, 0.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight, then animal sources of protein uh, tend to be superior to plant bases, uh, plant, excuse me, plant-based sources of protein. Um, now, I would say if you do go with plant proteins, make sure that they have a have multiple sources. So, like we work with a company called Organifi, and they're not just a single source of plant protein, but they use multiple sources with complementary amino acid profiles 
to give you better, uh, you know, better results with that with a lower protein intake. But otherwise, if your protein intake's high, it doesn't really matter. Do you think this applies on a day to day basis, or do you think collectively, if you've been consistently low on protein, then it matters most? Like, like what? What, I get it, what you're saying? So if it's high, but then one day it's low, right? It matters every day. Now, of course, the more days that are that are low, the more day, the more it's going to matter. But protein usage and turnover so fast that, in other words, it's not like uh, like energy from fat or carbohydrates that gets stored, right. right? Protein, you don't really store. You don't have a really usable source of stored protein in the body besides muscle. And you know how you know the, how how hard it is to get your body to use. I mean, you don't want that to happen. Yeah. Um, so it does. It makes a pretty. It makes a difference on a daily basis. So, you know, if if you're going to travel and you're not going to have high protein because you're on vacation or whatever, that's when it makes sense to have a scoop of like whey protein um, because of the, or eggs, right? Which is really high quality. But if your protein intake's high all the time, it doesn't really make a big difference at all. You know, do you, do you, have you guys noticed ever a difference for yourselves when you eat less? And <clears throat> not if I, not feeling wise, but I do, I notice a huge difference in just how, how quickly I build muscle when I'm consistently hitting my numbers. And when I, yeah. mm-hmm. and then versus when I think I'm eating enough protein. There's many times where I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm having enough protein. Then I actually start tracking. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm kind of under eating by a good 40, 50 grams every day consistently. Just simply bumping that up, like instantly notice the difference. Well, you, if you're like, a hundred, let's say you're a 130-pound <clears throat> female, okay, 130, 140-pound female, you're going to want to eat at least 100 grams of protein to hit the, the, the high limits, 100 to 140 grams of protein. That means three meals will have between 33 to 50 grams of protein. Okay, you show the typical female who weighs 140 pounds or so, here, here's your meal. It has to have 40 grams of protein. Yeah. They look at it, it's like, that's a lot of yeah. meat. That's a lot of chicken. That's a lot of egg. Like, how many eggs would give you 40 grams of protein? Like, five or six? Six. Six. Yeah. Six, yeah, that's, yeah. Most people don't eat six eggs in the morning, right? If no. I'm low on protein, <laughs> usually, like, the biggest thing that sticks out for me is, like, how inflamed my body is. And mainly it's just because... I what I would be eating in, in replacement of that oh. calorie wise, it's usually not <laughs> not ideal, especially if you have any kind of intolerances. Like that's something that is a glaring difference for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's really it. Yeah, the recovery for me is better if I'm like making sure I'm like focusing specifically on protein every day. That how, makes a difference. How big do you think the individual variance is in this too? Like. I think of a, a ex girlfriend I had that I've shared about before. Who she was a competitor, and she used to, uh, when she'd diet for a show, she would like practically starve herself, eight hundred, and like muscle would still stay on her. Oh, body. that's that's yeah. And then there would be someone like me who I swear, when I'm under, just slightly under, if I'm under consuming protein, like my body just refuses to want to build anymore. And the minute I bump it up, my body responds to that right away. So there's got to be a genetic component of course. too, right? So there's this generic general advice that most people should be hitting this this marker. And then there's that individual variance of somebody who's listening right now like, oh, I never track my protein and I'm always fine. Well, you might be that yep. individual like my ex-girlfriend was. And then there's other people who are like, oh yeah, I think I do. And they never really pay attention. And then they pay attention and then, oh wow, their body really starts yeah, responding. This is also where you get the studies on like collagen protein is good for um, your nails and your hair and your skin and your joints. It does make a difference if your protein's not super high, which again, most people are not in that high limit all the time. So if you're if you're eating, you know, under like I said, 0.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight and a scoop of collagen protein, you will notice a difference mm-hmm. in your hair and your skin and your nails. That's when it makes a big difference. But you know, back to what you were saying, Adam, you know, I, I've talked before about that one dude that worked for me, didn't have much money, and I I looked at his meals and he had like a pop tart for breakfast and yeah. And he was so strong, like skull crushers with 225. I calculated his protein intake per day. It was around 40 grams. Yeah. He was a 220-pound guy. Wow. So like genetics, yeah, they play a huge role. Yeah, you know what nobody talks about is insect protein. Yeah. That's right. the next thing, dude. Right? Yeah. I mean, they could pack so much protein uh, in those little bodies. Well, it's especially those crazy. cockroaches whenever die. Oh. Uh, okay. them over. You know what, They're though? high protein. You know, it's, hard, it's hard to convince people to make shakes out of those. That's well, even if it tastes good, because all you need to see when you get your scoop is one leg or one little antenna, you don't yeah. want to do it anymore. Plus, no. how do you know 
if there's bugs in it or if it's from the but processing. That, you know dude, I mean? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the sustainability, like, you know, if that's what we're hoping for. We got to convert people to bugs. Well, I don't want to ruin it for you guys. They already allow a certain amount and all that stuff. I know. Yeah. There's already like a, a There's threshold. a certain amount of rat poop that they allow. Yes. There's a certain amount of, yeah. I know. Mice and bugs and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you, when you get your, your, your supplements and protein powders, you want third party tested and, cause they, and, and you want super high quality because if they go just based off of, FDA standards, yeah. not very good. Yeah. Next question is from James Ayers 95. What are the major factors you consider when looking for a new gym? Oh, good question. What should you look for? Hot front desk to... girls. No. Okay. I mean, that's what I used to look for as a 17 year old boy. Of course. Well, just yeah, being honest. 17. Yeah. yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. No, you know what? Okay. Did you not do that? You guys didn't do that as a young, as a young boy? Bro, you... I was oh, so man. obsessed with lifting weights that all I cared about were really? the, the weights. <laughs> what about you, Justin? Don't lie. Yeah, dude. I mean, okay, that's good. A we're being factor, honest here right now. Yeah, I was 17. That's not one of my decisions. Environment is what I chalked it up to. You know, it's a nice environment. Yeah. yeah. When I was 17 years old, I was working out primarily to attract girls in the first place. So going to a place that had cute front desk girls. Sure. From 17 to 40 that's what you were doing <laughs> i uh, i know i i so here's what i recommend people look at i think this is very important okay cleanliness very important to look at the cleanliness of the gym go during prime time so like six o'clock at night seven o'clock at night go through the locker room look at the floor look at the sinks look at the pool because i managed gyms for years okay and uh, it can get pretty bad. Well, statistically sp statistically speaking, it's the three C's: cost, cleanliness, and convenience. Those are the three. The, the three. So they've done. That's what they. That's what people. They've think. actually done. They've done enough research on this, uh, and the, those are the three most important factors for the general population: yeah. is cleanliness, convenience, and cost. Now, in the gym. from coming from people like us who are who manage gyms and fitness professionals, what do you think? It's like, what do you think? People That's not for me. From yeah, for, I mean, me today. Okay, it's obviously not the the front desk girl answer anymore. It would be like I want. So what I like is a place that actually has multiple squat wrecks and deadlift platforms. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Because yes, those, no that is the worst. Yeah. That is the worst thing to have to wait for. Yeah. Because typically my workout routines. There's so many exercises. Well, doing the most of my workout routines are built around those two exercises. I mean that like, that's like the, the normally the crux of the workout. If I'm not, unless it's maybe bench presses the crux that day, but most of the time it's deadlift or squat is where I'm starting and spending my first 20 minutes. Yeah. And so if there's only one or two racks, and there's already two people working on yeah. it. Like that could just ruin that workout. Yeah, for me. you know it's a new, and I agree with you on that. But you know, what a new consideration for me these days is if they have a turf with a sled. Yeah, uh, and, and which is like something you'd never see uh, back in more the more common now. Super yeah, a lot common more common now. now. You yeah. can actually find a gym pretty easily uh, that has that uh, available for you. So. You know, I do want to say because so I just bought my dad a membership over at the Club Sport, uh, which is a really nice place, right? Since uh, so was it Silver Creek yeah. down here in San Jose? <clears throat> and my dad would never, my dad's, you know, he's a poor immigrant. He would never spend more than $10 a month on a gym membership. But I got it for him because he wants to go. He likes to use steam room, sauna kind of stuff. And he's been going to his the local cheap gym. And I took him in and he walked around. He's like, wow, this is really nice. The truth is you get what you pay for often when it comes to gyms. Now, what's funny is that people mm -hmm. will balk at spending 80 bucks a month or 100 bucks a month on a gym, but right. they would have no problem spending that much on streaming services or on their cell phone. That's such a good point, Sal. Like, that's a, it's so funny how we are that way. Like, well, we've been conditioned that's with like 24 hour fitnesses and Planet yeah. Fitnesses where they're Everything offering. should be like $9. Yeah, nine like, to 20 something dollars. And so everybody, which I used to get really annoyed working in like a, like in a nicer sport box where, People are conditioned for these low prices. Like, dude, the amenities that you get for this for that price is crazy. Also, you know who works out at gyms that are nine dollars a month? Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. So if you like overcrowded, not enough money to pay staff to clean it properly, not enough money to pay staff to walk People around. People doing ninja moves on yeah. uh, cable machines all day. Yeah. Like and, and and not and also like an equipment goes down and you go to a gym that's inexpensive and it's down for a month or two months. So, I mean, it's so true. You do get what you pay for. You do. It? If and it does sound like a lot of money to pay a hundred and something bucks, but how many things do we pay way more than dude, that? On if a you work basis? out consistently every week, okay, it's if well you go two it. or three days a week 
uh, spending money on a really good quality gym <laughs> is worth its weight in gold because it's because all the things that I talked about, mm -hmm. it's, it totally is. So that's what I always recommend people. But I look at cleanliness, how much equipment is broken. You could tell, you could walk through a gym and see if anything says out of order. If you see more than one piece of equipment with that says out of order, uh, not a good sign. Um, and then go there during uh, prime time or the times that you like to work out. What does the crowd look like? What are you dealing with? What's a good body fat percentage for a woman bulking? Oh, that's actually uh -oh. a good question. I would say you probably well, okay. So oh, well, yeah. Wait a second here, because I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge. I know you. where you're going. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 don't, like, I don't I don't care what body fat percentage you are. Here's, we have here's to define a, bulking though. Exactly. Well, okay. Here's a problem. Like, I think bulking is such a is is a, not a good word. reverse dieting is a better way to say this. Yeah, because bulking sounds like I'm trying to add tons of weight to my body. Right. Right. And I. And well, it deters a lot of women from me. Exactly, which is why option, I don't want to. Yes, is which is why I don't even like saying that. Yeah. Here's the deal. I mean, a, a bulk, a reverse diet is essentially the same thing. You are adding calories, additional calories back into the While diet. While simultaneously doing strength training. Wow, trying to build muscle, right? Trying to speed up the metabolism, build muscle. That's right. That's, that's, that's a very, very good point. So even if I had a obese you know, woman come to me, I would probably, mo not probably, I for sure would put her on a quote-unquote bulk or reverse diet to start her out. M almost every time or every time in my career that I had somebody that overweight, they had yo-yo dieted so many times that their caloric intake was really low considering how much weight they had on their body, and I didn't want to just cut them from that place. You didn't, so have, a, you didn't have a lot of room. Right. So if she came to me or he came to me, either one, we're talking about a woman here, if she came to me and she was... 45, 50% body fat percentage is really high. I would still bulk her or reverse diet her first. Very good point. So just to illustrate it further, if somebody had to lose 80 pounds, 80 pounds of body fat, okay, and you do that, you have them track their calories and they're eating 2,500 calories a day, which for a woman it doesn't sound too bad, right? However, we need to lose 80 pounds. That's going to take a long time of cutting those calories down. We may end up at 1,300, 1,200, 1,100 calories at yeah. the end of the weight loss, and then we're totally screwed. What do we do now? Your metabolism's running off of these really, really low calories. So that's a really, really good point. I like to get, I like to start people on a cut when their calories are high enough to where I can cut from them and, and be comfortable. Which is not like, high enough on their own, but high enough to where I can cut. Which from. is one in a million. One in a million. Yeah. Like you're going to get, especially someone who's coming to you who wants to lose body fat. Rarely ever are they in a healthy caloric place for you just to start them on a cut. So almost always, do you have to start off with like this, you know, reverse yeah. diet? But slash but a bulk. bulk, but a reverse diet is not so bulking. <clears throat> you know, it it kind of refers to the old school method of bulking and bodybuilding, where you were just trying to pack on yeah. as much weight as possible. A reverse diet's much slower. Yeah. So you're not going to take someone from 2,500 calories, and be like, oh, cool, we're going to reverse diet. Here's 3,500 calories. That's way too much. Honestly, what it looks like for the building. most of a real generic way is you are eating when you're hungry, but making whole food, healthy choices, and you're training to get strong. Yeah. yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. You don't need to be force feeding. I wouldn't be putting, I wouldn't put my female client on a bulk where I'm telling her to like stuff down extra calories or a gainer shake. It literally would be, listen, when you're hungry, I want you to eat. I want you to be satisfied and I want you to make these type. and I give for examples of types of meals, these types of choices, whole foods. And, and if you're hungry again, eat more whole foods. And then we're going to, when we train, we're going to train to get strong. Yep. That would be the goal. And then what happens is you see strength gains go up and <laughs> eventually the strength transfers becomes muscle. And then because of, you have more muscle and because you're building more muscle and moving in that direction, metabolism starts to speed up and then you start to see body composition change. So the scale doesn't move, but the person becomes leaner as they build muscle. And then eventually they stop building tons of muscle and the fat loss starts to really happen. And that sets you up for success. So I'm glad you went in that direction. Next question is from Lock Legs, Legs Locks. How does TRT affect fat loss diets considering extra water retention, et cetera? All right. So forget the water retention aspect of it because going on TRT, if your hormones are controlled and accounted for, you're not going to get tons of water retention. And I, this is why, by the way. So we have a site, mphormones.com, and we're working with a group of doctors and what you pay for when you go to a good place are the doctors, not the testosterone. There's every place that does TRT has testosterone, and it's it's cheap. 
the doctors are what you pay for to monitor this kind of stuff. So I did want to say that because if you're on TRT, meaning you're on enough testosterone to bring you into good normal levels, you shouldn't have all this crazy water retention and stuff like that. That's usually some, you're, you're, they're, they're not balancing you out. Yeah. Okay. So some that kind of side effect. That being said, okay, low testosterone is, is connected to lower muscle mass and more body fat. Higher testosterone, all within the range of normal, is connected to more muscle mass and less body fat. So if you look at the studies on TRT, men go on, going on TRT, and I think they have some with women, uh, some studies with women as well, because women also have testosterone, just a much smaller amount. But in the studies, they show that just putting men who have low testosterone on testosterone to bring it up to high normal, not even tr working out, not changing their diet, not that I recommend that. I think you, you, if you go on TRT, good time to also really dial in your diet and exercise. But in these studies, just going on TRT, they lose body fat and they build muscle because testosterone indirectly is a fat burning hormone. Indirectly in the sense that- Not, it, to, not to mention, it's also sending a signal around the clock 24 seven to build muscle. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you eat, this was like, one of the biggest things that I noticed when I was off of testosterone for that extended period of time, and then I got back on therapy, one of the things that made me feel the best was this, was just simply like I could eat like, and I, I, I did before. And it was a muscle. Yes, it would actually, I would actually build muscle. So I got leaner much easier than when I was off. When I was off and my hormones were in the tank or in the dump, I, I was dieting and still struggling to lose any sort of body fat at all. And even slightly eating off the diet felt like it just yeah. stuck to my body. Yes. It was so do you think this question then, it's more related to probably the diet uh, on some level, like whatever they have included in their diet that's creating this water retention? Well, if your testosterone goes crazy high, you're going to get a level of water retention that you can't control, okay? But if it's monitored properly, it's the conversion to estrogen and other factors where your hormones are a little off that tends to cause water retention. So you shouldn't see, once you get to the point where everything's balanced and monitored, you shouldn't get all this water retention. Or well, this, this question is, okay, how does TRT affect fat loss diets considering extra water retention? First of all, those, water are, retention two, those, isn't are, fat. those are two separate things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fat loss is one thing, and water in your body yeah. is totally different. So they're not even related mm. in, in this in this sense. So it, they don't they don't affect each other. Like your water, holding on to water, not holding on to water, does not affect your fat loss, right. and your fat loss doesn't affect your 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 water retention or not. Right? No, so they're no. separate. Yeah. Right? Now testosterone, I was going to say, is is it does burn body fat indirectly, so it's not a direct fat burner, but because it signals the body to partition calories to muscle. Yeah. And because of the metabolism boosting effects of the more muscle, fat loss tends to happen. So what you tend to see it from anecdote uh, from people who go on TRT is they'll build strength, build muscle, and then you start to see fat loss. Not unlike what we talked about earlier with the reverse diet, where you reverse diet someone, get their muscle to come up, and then the fat loss starts to happen. So that's kind of how it works out. But again, you you, you don't just want to go on testosterone and be like, this is cool. All right, great. Yeah. Because everything's how, accounted for now. Yeah, how your body reacts and responds, and how it com how it converts some of it to estrogen, and how you feel. Um, all these things need to be looked at by somebody who knows what they're doing, and then they can mu individualize it to make it work really well for you. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam, and you can find me on Twitter at MindPumpSal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit, and that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.